Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Performance Nutrition. In this week's video, we're going to focus on the importance of staying hydrated and daily fluid needs. I'll talk about both daily fluid needs as well as fluid recommendations leading into and during exercise. And I'll also discuss rehydration fluid goals post-exercise. And we'll go through what types of fluids you might choose for your daily and around exercise fluid needs. My name's Chris Fonda, a performance dietitian sharing my passion for and knowledge of evidence-based sports nutrition to help you reach peak health and performance. Make sure you click that subscribe button on the bottom right of this video and click that bell icon too when it pops up so you don't miss out on any of my weekly videos. I will make sure to include links related to this week's video in the description box below. But for now, let's jump into it. So why is it important to keep hydrated? Well, our bodies are made up of around 50 to 80% water, and this depends mainly on our age, body size, and level of lean muscle mass. Water has so many important functions in our bodies. It helps us to lubricate and cushion our joints, aids in helping us digest our food and prevents constipation. It is a major component of our blood in our body that carries nutrients and oxygen to all our body cells. It helps regulate our body temperature when we exercise, and it maintains our skin's texture, appearance, and moisture. Water helps maintain the health and integrity of every cell in the body, so that when we do become dehydrated, this does affect the health and integrity of all our body cells. We all know how it feels when we are dehydrated. Some of us get headaches, some of us find it difficult to concentrate, and in general, we just feel flat and fatigued. For most athletes, being dehydrated, which is classified as a total body fluid loss of greater than 2%, can affect performance. And losing too much fluid when we exercise through sweating can put a strain on the cardiovascular system and cause our bodies to overheat, making exercise seem harder than it is. And if it's not managed or treated, it can also lead to heat stress, stroke, and in certain circumstances, death. So let's talk about daily fluid needs. We get water from both the food we eat as well as from the tap and other liquid drinks that we might drink like milk, juice, tea, coffee and soft drinks. Foods with a high water content include fruit, vegetables, milk, yogurt, pasta, rice and soft cheeses like ricotta and cottage cheese. And these foods contribute to around 20% of our daily fluid needs. When we digest and metabolise food, this process can also produce about 10% water. So that remaining 70% we need to get from liquid drinks. Population-based guidelines for the recommended amount of fluid intake exist, and they state that for men, 3.4 litres per day is recommended, and of this, 2.6 litres from fluid alone. For women, 2.8 litres of fluid per day, or 2.1 litres from fluid alone. So fluid means water, milk, and or other drinks. Now the problem with population-based fluid guidelines for athletes is that it doesn't take into account a person's individual circumstances. Our daily fluid needs will change and it depends on a number of factors. How much we might exercise, our individual sweat rate, environmental temperature and humidity, our food intake, the amount of lean muscle mass that we have, and any health conditions that we may suffer from, such as kidney disease. So a practical, simple guide to making sure you are drinking enough water daily is to ask yourself three questions. One, am I thirsty? Two, is my morning urine color dark? And three, is my body weight noticeably lower this morning compared to yesterday? And if you've answered yes to any two of these questions, you are likely dehydrated. And if it answered yes to all three, you're very likely dehydrated. So make sure you aim for a pale straw yellow urine color next time you go to the bathroom. And if your urine color is more like the color of apple juice, you need to drink more. But if your urine color is clear, you may be drinking too much. So drinking too little can affect your health and performance, but it can also put a strain on your kidneys. And drinking too much can deplete the electrolyte content of your blood and extreme circumstances can lead to hyponatremia, which is low blood sodium or salt. So what are the fluid recommendations in the lead up to training, competition or exercise? So as I've just mentioned, use your daily fluid needs as a guide. Always start exercise in a hydrated state. So make sure that your urine color is a pale straw yellow color before exercising. And if it is the color of apple juice, make sure you have about one to two cups of fluid in your pre-exercise meal or snack, 
and then another one to two cups within the hour before starting exercising. And consuming this fluid with some salt or sodium in your food can help your body hold on to more of this fluid, meaning you'll pee less out and start better hydrated. Make sure you do trial these pre-exercise fluid recommendations in training so that you can make adjustments and prevent a scenario where you need to run to the bathroom during exercise. Fluid recommendations during training, competition or exercise will vary. And the aim of fluid recommendations during exercise is to prevent that loss of more than 2% body fluid to prevent dehydration. Fluid recommendations during exercise will depend on the exercise duration, intensity, individual sweat rates, environmental temperature, altitude, and the specific needs or logistics of each sport. So to find out how much fluid you need to consume during exercise to prevent that loss of more than 2% body fluid, your performance dietitian can conduct a fluid balance assessment. And they can monitor your fluid losses through sweat and urine, as well as the intake through food and drink, and work this out for you and give you practical tips on when and what to drink during exercise. Whether you drink to a fluid plan or ad libitum or as needed during exercise does depend on a number of factors. Following a fluid plan during exercise may not be needed for exercise durations of less than 60 minutes at moderate intensities in cool environments. And in these situations, drinking as needed should be sufficient. But when exercise durations go beyond 60 minutes at a moderate to high intensity in warm to hot environments, drinking to a fluid plan is recommended. And most experts agree that drinking too much so that your body weight is heavier post-exercise is not recommended as this can lead to the condition known as hyponatremia or low blood salt or sodium, which can be dangerous and in extreme circumstances lead to death. So what about fluid recommendations for the rehydration post-exercise training or competition? So our post-exercise rehydration goals have been around for a number of years with the volume of fluid, pattern of drinking and sodium content being investigated. The first four to six hours after exercise represents the period where rapid rehydration seems to be most beneficial. And it is recommended to consume about 125 to 150% of your total fluid loss after exercise. And if you've seen my previous YouTube video on recovery nutrition for athletes, one kilo of body weight loss is roughly about one liter of body fluid loss. So if you did lose one kilo during exercise, to rehydrate effectively, you would need to consume about 1.25 to one and a half liters of fluid over that four to six hour period. And the reason behind consuming a little bit more is to account for losses that would occur when going to the bathroom. So depending on your gut tolerance, you can drink this volume of fluid quickly over the first two to four hours or spread it out more evenly over six hours. And consuming this amount of fluid with some electrolytes or sodium can help your body hold on to more that, of that volume. Consume your post-exercise rehydration fluid with foods containing sodium is also another option. So cereal, bread, fruit toast, Vegemite, milk, yogurt, pretzels, etc. And if you do enjoy a brunch or breakfast out at a cafe, options like eggs and smashed avo on toast will not only meet your sodium needs, paired with a drink, but also meet your post-exercise carbohydrate and protein needs too. So what types of fluid you choose depends on what you're after. For most people, plain water is effective enough for daily hydration needs. But if you are looking at enhancing your hydration needs, combining water with an electrolyte tablet or formulation can assist you hold on to more of this water due to that sodium content. And if you're looking at topping up your carbohydrate stores pre or during exercise, a sports drink can help as it contains fluid, electrolytes, and also carbohydrate. But the choice is ultimately up to you and your individual needs. So if you still have questions or would like to know more about your individual fluid needs, chat with a performance dietitian. And you can find one by clicking on the link in the description box below. So check that out. And if you've liked what you've heard so far, give this video a thumbs up, share this video, and share your tips in the comments below on how you stay hydrated. But that's it from me for now. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Fonda out.